you'll be a poorer person all your life if you don't know some of the great stories and great poems. Walt Disney. Where do the stories come from? That question was asked of Walt Disney nearly 50 years ago. As you explore this DVD edition of Beauty and the Beast, you'll discover a whole fascinating story behind the making of the movie. There's the original fairy tale written and published centuries ago. Did you know that versions of this tale, a beautiful girl in love with a beastly suitor, exist all over the world? Think about the Beauty and the Beast stories you might know. The story of Cyrano de Bergerac, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Phantom of the Opera. What about King Kong? Walt Disney himself tried to adapt Beauty and the Beast as an animated feature, twice. But what about some of the other classic Disney animated features? Where did those stories come from? As Walt himself said so many years ago... So on this program, we will try to answer in part this question. Potential story ideas exist all around us. Let's go backstage at the Walt Disney Studios. We'll see how inspiration can come from a classic fairy tale, a well-known book, an historical event, or a brand new idea. Between the pages and behind the scenes, we'll read between the lines and learn the story behind the story. books are divisible into two classes, the books of the hour and the books of all time. John Ruskin. Once upon a time, a beautiful girl was reduced to being a household servant by her jealous stepmother and cruel stepsisters. They called her Cinderella. The announcement of a royal ball for all the fair maidens in the land sent the household into a frenzy. But poor Cinderella knew she would never be allowed to attend. With the help of a bit of magic from her fairy godmother, Cinderella was given a beautiful dress and a magnificent coach, with the stern warning to return home by midnight when the magic spell would be broken. At the ball, Cinderella captured the attention of the handsome prince, and the two fell deeply in love. Fleeing the ball at midnight, Cinderella left behind only a romantic memory and a delicate glass slipper. The prince and Grand Duke searched far and wide for the mysterious maiden. With the help of her friends, and to the dismay of her jealous stepmother and stepsisters, Cinderella's true identity was discovered, and she and Prince Charming lived happily ever after. Hello, I'm Paige O'Hara. The origin of the story many of us know today as Cinderella can actually be traced back to a 9th century tale from China. The legend is known in almost every country around the world. There's a famous version from Scotland called Ration Coty, an Italian cat Cinderella, the Brothers Grimm's Ash Girl, even a Nigerian folktale called The Maiden, The Frog, and The Chief's Son. In fact, more than a thousand versions of the Cinderella story have been recorded and cataloged worldwide. Why is the Cinderella story so treasured around the world? It's probably because of Cinderella's clear-cut moral. The way you act toward others creates its own reward or sometimes its own punishment. And with a little bit of hope, dreams can come true. Walt Disney based his film version of Cinderella on the most famous Western telling of the tale, French author Charles Perrault's Cendrillon, which was published in 1697 in his History of Tales from Times Past, a book that began the written history of the fairy tale. And that's the story behind the story. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Thomas Alva Edison. A young lion cub, Simba, struggled to find his place in nature's circle of life and to follow in the regal paw prints of his father, the great King Mufasa, after his father was killed by his treacherous uncle, Scar. 
Scar convinced Simba that he was responsible for his father's death and urged him to run far away from the Pride Lands and never return. A frightened and guilt-stricken Simba fled into exile, where he was befriended by a wacky but warm-hearted warthog, Pumbaa, and his freewheeling meerkat companion, Timon. Simba adopted their Hakuna Matata attitude toward life, living on a diet of bugs and taking things one day at a time as he matured into a young adult. When his childhood friend Nala arrived on the scene and told him of the hard times the pride had endured under Scar's reign, Simba knew that he must return home. Soon, the wise shaman baboon, Rafiki, convinced Simba that his father's spirit lived on in him and that he must accept his responsibility. Taking his rightful place as king, Simba defeated Scar and his army of hyenas and became the Lion King. Hello, I'm James Earl Jones. The movie we know so well today as The Lion King actually began development many years before its 1994 release as an original story, then titled King of the Jungle. Knowing how beloved The Lion King is today, you might find it hard to believe that producer Don Hahn had trouble convincing artists at Disney to come on board to work on this new film. You see, no one was familiar with the story of the characters of this new project because they had been created especially for this film. When production began, an artistic team traveled to Africa to search for ways to best present the African settings in the film. Back at the studio, the animators studied actual live lions and other animals. Computer-generated imagery was used to create the dramatic wildebeest stampede. It was an exciting visual highlight in the film and a new level of sophistication for the art form. The Lion King became one of the most popular films of all time, and today the characters are as well known as if they had been with us for generations. The Lion King even inspired an imaginative and magical stage version, which won many awards, including the Tony Award for Best Musical. So you see, even a new and original tale can find its way into the fabric of our culture. And that's the story behind the story. History is the version of past events that people have decided to agree upon. Napoleon Bonaparte. Pocahontas, the daughter of the great Indian chief Powhatan, felt uncertain about the path her life should take. Along with her constant companions, Miko, a raccoon, and Flit, a hummingbird, Pocahontas visited Grandmother Willow, a wise tree spirit, for advice. Shortly afterward, a sailing ship of English settlers appeared, and soon Pocahontas met the brave English captain, John Smith. As she opened his eyes to an understanding and respect for the world around him, the two fell in love. The other English settlers, led by Governor Ratcliffe, were intent only on finding gold in the New World and became convinced the Indians were hiding the precious metal from them. An inexperienced settler accidentally killed one of the Indian braves, but Smith let the Indians think he was responsible, and so Smith was condemned to death. Begging her father to spare Smith's life, Pocahontas finds her path in life to help establish the peace between the Jamestown settlers and her tribe. Severely wounded by an enraged Ratcliffe, Smith was forced to return to England. Pocahontas and John Smith parted, each knowing their lives were richer for the love they shared. Hello, I'm David Ogden Stiers. You might be surprised to know that the fascinating legend of Pocahontas is based on real people. The story of Pocahontas has long been the subject of debate, and much of it remains shrouded in mystery to this day. But we do know that Pocahontas' real name was Matawaka. Her father, Chief Powhatan, gave her the more familiar nickname Pocahontas, which means little mischief. 
She was born around 1595 into a highly sophisticated native culture that existed in the area of what is now Jamestown, Virginia. By most accounts, when John Smith and his fellow English settlers came to Virginia in 1607, Pocahontas was indeed important in keeping them alive through her diplomatic and charitable efforts. Her winning, carefree personality helped to ease tensions between the two very different cultures. Now John Smith was born in 1580 in Willoughby, Lincolnshire, England, and had been involved in a lifetime of international adventures before arriving in Virginia at age 27. Over the years, storytellers have romanticized and embellished the known historical facts to the point where the story of Pocahontas has become a sort of early American Romeo and Juliet. The Disney version of the story uses the known facts about Pocahontas as the starting point for a romantic historic adventure tale, but it remains true to Pocahontas' spirit and enhances her acknowledged role as a peacekeeper. And that is the story behind the story. There are treasures in books that all the money in the world cannot buy, that the poorest laborer can have for nothing. Robert G. Ingersoll. In the jungles of India, a human boy named Mowgli was raised by wolves. The vicious tiger, Shere Khan, vowed to kill the man cub. To protect the pack, the wolves cast Mowgli out. Bagheera, the panther, was selected to accompany Mowgli on his journey to the safety of the man village. Bagheera had a hard time, though, because Mowgli didn't want to leave the jungle. After all, it was the only home he had ever known. After meeting Baloo the bear, a lovable jungle bum, Mowgli was even more certain that he wanted to stay in the jungle with his friends. But after an encounter with crazy King Louis of the Apes, Baloo and Bagheera forced Mowgli to return to the man village. But instead, Mowgli ran away. Alone in the jungle, Mowgli met the wicked Shere Khan. Only the quick thinking and bravery of his friends defeated the crafty tiger. Soon after, Mowgli's first sight of the man village convinced him that it was the place he belonged. Hello, I'm Robbie Benson. Throughout his career, Walt Disney was always on the lookout for great stories to bring to life. Rudyard Kipling's 1894 classic, The Jungle Book, first caught Walt's attention in the late 1930s. Kipling was born of British parents in Bombay, India. He began his career as a journalist there, and although he returned to England as a young man, his memories of his experiences in India stayed with him always. They were the subject of his famous book, Kim, and the classic Just So Stories, as well as two volumes of The Jungle Book. Walt Disney acquired the film rights to The Jungle Book in 1962. Veteran storyman Bill Peet created a lush and moody visual style for the classic story, firmly based in Kipling's books, but it seemed that Walt wasn't interested in the book itself as much as the vivid characters and exotic settings. All this initial development was abandoned, and the Disney team started all over with Walt's command in mind, have fun with it. The Jungle Book was the last animated feature that Walt Disney personally supervised. He died during its production. There was a lot of worry about whether the Disney animation staff could make the film work without Walt, but when it was released, The Jungle Book was an immediate blockbuster hit. Its winning combination of captivating characters, humor, drama, and music has made it one of Disney's most beloved animated features. And that's the story behind the story. The oldest books are still new to those who have not read them. Samuel Butler. 
Once upon a time, there lived a king and his fair queen. Many years they had longed for a child, but when their wish was granted, the newborn princess was cursed by an evil fairy, doomed to die at the age of 16 by pricking her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. In a kind-hearted effort by her parents and her fairy protectors, the princess was spirited away and raised in a forest cottage disguised as a peasant girl called Briar Rose. Here it was hoped that she would live safely past her fateful 16th birthday. Alas, despite the best intentions, the curse was fulfilled, not in death but with an enchanted sleep from which only the kiss of true love could awaken the princess. The good fairies put everyone in the castle into a deep sleep, awaiting the day when the spell could be broken. Only with the aid of Prince Philip was the power of the evil fairy destroyed, and the sleeping beauty was awakened by true love's kiss. Hello, I'm Jody Benson. The tale of the Sleeping Beauty dates all the way back to an Arthurian romance, first printed in 1528. The Italian storyteller Giambattista Basile wrote his version of the story, called Sun, Moon, and Talia, in 1636. It was this version of the story that Charles Perrault adapted into his famous version of Sleeping Beauty, published in his History of Tales from Times Past in 1697. After Perrault, the brothers Grimm wrote their version, called Little Briar Rose, for their own collection of stories, an 1812 German book called Children's and Household Tales. Although Disney's Sleeping Beauty offers full credit to Charles Perrault's version as its source, it is actually closer to the brothers Grimm version. The Grimm tale ends earlier than the others, with the princess awakened by the prince's kiss. In the Perot version, the awakening of the princess is only the halfway point. Perot continued the story with the marriage and the events that followed in what becomes a very grisly story indeed. Sometimes the choices made in adapting a tale have less to do with what is left in, but rather what is left out. And that's the story behind the story. What if all the myths were true? Liu Kang. Like most young Chinese women of her time, Mulan wanted to please and honor her family, but seemed destined to fail. When she was sent to meet the matchmaker, who was to find her a good husband, Mulan's gawkiness and lack of grace led to shame and rejection. These problems paled, however, when her aging father was summoned to join the Imperial Army to repel the invading Huns. Realizing that her father could never survive in battle, Mulan disguised herself as a soldier and joined the army in his place. Mulan's courage and ingenuity eventually distinguished her in the eyes of her commander, Captain Shang, and Mulan's actions became key in turning back the Huns in battle. When Mulan was wounded and it was discovered that she was really a woman, Shang abandoned her as a traitor. Left behind, Mulan saw the Hun army heading for the Imperial Palace and raced there ahead of the invaders. When Mulan defeated the Hun general Shan Yu and saved the emperor, she brought honor upon herself and her family and won the heart of Captain Shang. Hello, I'm Ming-Na. Since the dawn of recorded history, in every clan, in every culture, from ancient Greece to China, Egypt, the Americas, and Polynesia, heroes have embarked on life-altering journeys. One of the most renowned and beloved of these wandering heroes is a young woman named Mulan. In Asia, the story of Mulan is as well known as the story of Cinderella is in Western culture. The story of this brave Chinese woman has been told for nearly 2,000 years, and Mulan is rumored to have been a real person. For Walt Disney feature animation, Mulan presented an unusual and powerful story with distinctive characters. The tale of Mulan also contains universal themes that often the individual must sacrifice for the greater good. 
and that the path of personal discovery lies in that sacrifice. It was a legend that was developed enough to contain those strong elements, but spare enough to invite further development by the Disney storytellers. And though the incidents of the Disney story may not be derived from Asian legends, the spirit of the story has survived intact. And that's the story behind the story. In the case of good books, the point is not how many of them you can get through, but rather how many can get through to you. Mortimer Adler. High in the bell tower of the mighty cathedral, the lonely outsider Quasimodo longed to be out in the world beyond the parapets of his steeple, defying the orders of his evil surrogate father, Minister of Justice Frollo. The frightened hunchback journeyed into the streets of Paris, where he met and fell in love with a beautiful gypsy girl named Esmeralda. He also befriended Phoebus, captain of the King's Guards. Although heartbroken when he learned of Phoebus and Esmeralda's love for each other, Quasimodo ultimately risked everything to bring them together. Quasimodo's selfless love triumphed over both his own heartache and Frollo's obsessive hatred of Esmeralda. In the end, each of these outcasts helped the other to attain their place of acceptance in the world and within themselves. Hello. I'm Angela Lansbury. Victor Hugo's classical novel, Notre Dame de Paris, was inspired by a visit to Notre Dame Cathedral, where Hugo discovered a cryptic inscription. It was a single word, fate, carved deep into a stone wall in the tower. Now, what could this lonely and melancholy message mean? Who had put it there and why? As Hugo pondered the origins and meaning of the message, the now classic story began to take shape in his mind. When his novel was first published in 1831, Hugo was only 28 years old. He had written the epic 200,000 word manuscript in just six months, and it is said with a single bottle of ink. Notre Dame de Paris was an instant success, selling 3,000 copies in 18 months. It was embraced by such famous authors of the day as Rudyard Kipling and Robert Louis Stevenson, and set the fashion for fictional explorations of the past. Disney wasn't an obvious studio to adapt this classic tragedy for the screen, but according to producer Don Hahn, at the heart of Victor Hugo's complex tale is a simple and compelling story. It is the story of an outsider, a fearsome face with a beautiful soul, a man who wants to be accepted by the world around him but must tackle his own inner fears in order to do so. It is an eloquent affirmation of the human spirit. And that's the story behind the story. Learning is a treasure which accompanies its owner everywhere. Chinese proverb. So now you know a little more about where the stories come from. I hope that you've enjoyed the pleasure of discovery in these insights. There are so many fascinating things to be discovered between the pages, behind the scenes, and between the lines. I hope that you'll continue to learn and to know. It is possible for you to do whatever you choose, and the more you know, the more ready you'll be to achieve the goals in your life. And that is truly the story behind the story.